Welcome to Daxlaw GH and welcome to our video on VAT in Ghana. We are looking at the basic principles and concepts and this is our third video so far in the series. If you've not watched the first two, I highly recommend you do that before you watch this very one. We ended off our discussion in the just ended video on exam supplies. Let's move on to what we call zero rated supplies. What we are saying here is a taxable supply is taxable at a zero rate if it is listed in the second schedule or on the second schedule. If you watched um, our previous video where we explained exam supplies to be supplies which are listed on the first schedule, we looked at every single item on the first schedule. Now we are coming to what we are calling the second schedule and I'm saying if you find an item listed on the second schedule, that item is not exempt from VAT. It is indeed subject to VAT it is indeed a taxable supply, just that the rate of tax applicable will be a rate of 0%. So those who watched the first video, remember I showed you a table of rates and I said one of the rates is a rate of 0% that applies to something we call zero rated supply. So what we are saying here is, I'll show you shortly, there's a list on the second schedule. You can find that in the second schedule of our VAT Act at 870. And anything listed there is subject to VAT but at a rate of 0%. What we are saying here is also that where a taxable person has applied the rate of 0% to a supply, that person is required to obtain and retain the documentary proof that is acceptable to the Commissioner General and that substantiates the person's entitlement to apply the rate of zero. So you can't just wake up one morning and say you want to apply a zero rate. You must have documentary proof that shows that indeed you've met the qualifying conditions for applying a zero rate to your transaction. So I'll show you um, the second schedule shortly. Before we go there, we have looked at exempt supplies. Remember, the basic principles of VAT from our very first video is that VAT applies to all supplies of goods and services made in Ghana other than exempt or unless they are clearly exempt. And we saw exempts to be supplies from the first schedule. We also said VAT applies to the import of goods into Ghana, the import of services into Ghana, unless those exempts or unless those imports were listed on the exempt schedule, which is the first schedule. So let's look here before we come to the second schedule. What will we define to be an exempt import? And I'm saying an import of goods is said to be exempt if that item is listed on the first schedule. So in our part two of this video series. We looked at all the items on the second schedule. If you have anything there that is imported into Ghana, then that item is deemed to be an exempt import for the purpose of VAT. In addition to any item listed on the first schedule being exempt for import purposes, we are saying that any item that is deemed to be exempt in line with the customs tariff schedule, which we we'll call the harmonized system or the harmonized code, We'll look at that into details when we treat customs and international taxes, international trade. For now, just know that any item listed on the first schedule is necessarily an exempt import in addition to what customs will provide for in what we call the harmonized code. We'll look at that shortly. So now let's look at what we can find on the second schedule. So on the second schedule, things are broken down into two subcomponents, supply of goods and supply of services so anything on the second shadow remember i said that item will be taxable but you apply a rate of zero percent so what can we find on the second shadow the first thing we'll find there is a supply of goods where the supplier has entered the goods for export pursuant to the customs act of ghana act 891 and those goods have indeed been exported from ghana by the supplier so let me give you a clue here one thing you should always remember that if you want to think about items or supplies that apply zero rate, your first thing to think about is items that are exported from Ghana. That's just a general overview. It's not the hard and fast rule, but first thing to think about is exports are zero rated. Either you're exporting a good or exporting a service. That's your first starting point. All exports will ordinarily zero rated. So the first point here is any good where the supplier has indeed entered the good for export and the customs, 
you need to make the relevant um, export declarations at the port and then indeed prove that the goods have been exported you should have documentary um, evidence that shows that the goods have left Ghana once you do this you can apply a VAT rate of 0% on that supply in addition when I say a supply of goods where the Commissioner General is satisfied that the goods have indeed been exported from Ghana without having been used in Ghana after the supplier was entered except as necessary for or incidental to the export so also it applies to goods that you have actually exported from Ghana and you did not use the goods in Ghana after you entered the, um, the supplies for export so it links to the first point the whole idea here is goods that you have exported from Ghana actually exported and then you have documentary proof to show that the goods have actually left the shores of our country Ghana the next is a supply of goods under a rental agreement a charter party or agreement for chartering where the goods are used exclusively in an export country so here too it's still related to exports you've you have entered into a supply of goods arrangement that has to do with a rental agreement a charter party or an agreement for chartering so either it's going to be on outgoing vessels outgoing ships or aircraft whatever but the whole idea is the goods are going to be used exclusively in a certain export country so the destination principle here is the goods are going to be used outside Ghana and as a result of that we will apply a rate of 0% in addition to this we are seeing a supply of goods which are shipped as stores on foreign going vessels or foreign going aircraft leaving the territories of Ghana and going to a destination in an export country would also apply a zero rate what does this mean in practice or typically goods shipped as stores on foreign going vessels or foreign going aircraft see it as this any good any item that will be shipped from Ghana and the sole purpose is for this good or this item to be used or to be consumed on the aircraft on the ship that is leaving Ghana is deemed to be goods that are shipped as stores on foreign going vessels that's at a very fundamental level goods that you have on a foreign going vessel that has a sole purpose of, of being shipped as part of the carriage as part of items that may be used on the vessel on its way outside Ghana on its way out of Ghana then we deem those goods to be shipped as stores on foreign going vessels or foreign going aircraft that are leaving Ghana so remember that so far all the examples we've looked at have to do with some form of export so it's either a good or a service so far it's either a good or an item that is leaving the shores of Ghana the next is a supply so this is quite distinct what I'm talking about now a supply to something we call a free zone developer or a free zone enterprise um, these are entities that are established on a special concession with the government of Ghana they have um, their first 10 years they don't pay any corporate taxes so they have a 0% corporate income tax rate after the 10 years if they export then they have a corporate tax rate of 15% if they sell domestically or they sell to the local market then they get the general corporate income tax rate of 25 percent we look at free zones companies as a separate concept or a separate topic altogether so just keep um, watching but for now just know that the kind of business i just described a free zone entity that has the tax concessions i just mentioned if you supply goods to them and you are able to prove that a free zones entity provides satisfactory documentation that their operations and procedures satisfy what the free zones act provides for then you also need to apply a zero rate to that supply so if you make a supply to a free zones entity you make a supply to a free zones company then once they have complied with everything they need to do on their side and you have also complied with the requirements of the free zones act then you can apply a rate of zero percent so remember apart from general export any supplies for free zones company that meets the requirements of the free zones act will also be zero rated um, the next one is a supply of goods as part of a transfer of a taxable activity as a going concern by one taxable person to another taxable person remember we said it is possible that you can sell your business as part of a going concern 
and we explained this in our earlier videos to, to mean that the business you are selling should be capable of being used in its current form remember i explained going concern for those without an accounting background to mean the concept or the assumption that a business will continue into the foreseeable future so here remember just take it at a basic level we'll explain into details in advanced vat concept but for now understand that a supply of goods as part of a transfer of a taxable activity as a going concern will also get the zero rating treatment if you meet the conditions prescribed under the law then the last one we'll look at perhaps is the minister will make regulations um, to provide for the zero rating of exports by tourists and similar persons if they meet certain conditions the minister here the law is making reference to the minister of finance so he'll make regulations to to give them um, guidance as to how tourists who come to ghana may also get a zero rating treatment um, for things they take outside Ghana. We are saying, we've been talking about exports so far, we are saying a good or a supply of goods shall not be considered to be exported from Ghana unless, number one, immediately before being put on board the conveyance, which is the ship or the aircraft, whatever, for export, the goods are produced to the Commissioner, Commissioner of Customs for examination. So provide or produce the goods to the Commissioner of Customs let him examine the goods let him be satisfied that the goods are in a state ready to leave Ghana. that's condition number one number two on demand by the commissioner of customs you seeking to export the goods must provide a sample to him for testing purposes so he wants to test the goods and be guaranteed be assured that these are goods we will want to leave the shores of ghana the next is the person in charge of the conveyance for the export or any other person in charge may authorize would have to certify on the document that um, the goods have indeed been entered and have been received on board so someone has to prove someone has to certify that these goods have indeed been received on the vessel on the aircraft or whatever is leaving Ghana, the ship there must be a way to document to check the commissioner general wants to examine the goods he wants samples to test someone in charge of the conveyance for the export should be able to also certify on the document that the goods have been received on board the vessel or aircraft which is leaving Ghana and then the particulars of the goods must be included in something called a cargo manifest this is a typical customs document which is used it contains so many details it has to do with the quantity of goods where it is leaving um, the port it is leaving whether it's Ghana the port is going to whether it's Germany or UK or wherever the, the manifest is a comprehensive document that is attached to um, conveyances to tran and to transfers to export and all of that we are saying also that the supply of goods will not be considered to be exported from ghana if the supply has been or will be re-imported to ghana by the suppliers so if you are taking the goods out only to re-import it at a later date will not deem it to be technically um, exported from ghana so remember these are things to um, have in mind to prove that indeed goods have been exported from ghana We've looked at how to zero rate goods or a supply of goods. How about a supply of services? What must you comply with to get the zero rating treatment for a supply of services? We are seeing a supply of services directly in connection with land or any improvement to land which is situated outside Ghana is a zero rated supply. So if you supply any service that has to do with land outside Ghana, then that supply is deemed to be zero rated remember i told you the principle the concept is that once the supply of good or service has a link to an export something outside ghana then generally we'll try to zero rate it so here you are supplying a service that had to do with land which is outside ghana then we'll try and link the service to the land outside ghana and we'll zero rate that supply you are providing that service the next is a supply of services which is directly in respect to personal property which is also situated outside ghana at the time you provide the service so once again services that has to do or services that are linked to um, personal property outside ghana would also be zero rated you apply a vat rate of zero percent because the second shadow provides this clearly the next is a supply of services to the extent that the services are consumed elsewhere than ghana or elsewhere than in Ghana. 
So here, this is a general blanket principle. Once you provide services, and that service will be consumed by someone who is not in Ghana. Typically, generally, the general rule is you apply a VAT rate of 0%. So if I'm providing services, let's say consulting service, advisory service to someone in Germany, and that person will consume the service in Germany or will utilize that advice or consulting I provided to him in Germany, then I will zero rate the supply of the service from the Ghanaian perspective. The next, the supply of services that comprises the filing, prosecution, granting, maintenance, transfer, assignment, licensing, or enforcement of any intellectual property rights for use outside Ghana. So once again, any intellectual property rights in these forms, whether you are filing, prosecuting, granting, maintaining, transferring, and all of the variants. When it has to do with intellectual property rights for use outside Ghana, we deem this to be a service that is going to be consumed outside Ghana. So we apply a VAT rate of 0%. Then a supply of freight and insurance, which has to do with the export of goods. Once again, the goods leaving Ghana would be zero rated if it meets the conditions I just mentioned, having to do with the Commissioner General Inspection, providing samples and all of that. If you provide freight, which is transportation, or you provide insurance and has to do with goods that are being exported, then ordinarily the supply of freight and insurance will also get the zero rated treatment. Remember, this is very, very important. We have looked at exempt supplies. We said those supplies do not attract VAT at all. Those supplies will be found on the fair schedule to the VAT Act. We've looked at zero rated supplies. We said these supplies are not exempt, they are taxable just that the rate of tax you apply is 0% and we said these zero rated supplies can be found on the second schedule to the VAT Act. Now let's come to the third category which we call relief supplies. So there are three, remember, see that you are zero rated, see that you are exempt, see that you are relief. So let's look at relief supplies. We are saying the minister may make regulations to grant relief from persons for goods and services acquired in the country if they are specified in the third schedule. So remember, first schedule, exempt supplies. Second schedule, zero rated supplies. Third schedule, relief supplies. As saying for the purpose of the above, the minister will specify the method by which the persons entitled to relief shall obtain that relief. And to be honest, the minister has already done this. So if you read the, the VAT regulations, um, LI2243, the minister has provided there that the mechanism for getting relief is to make a payment and later apply for a refund. But because this video is for basics, it's for beginners, we'll look at this concept a lot more deep, into a lot more details when we get to the advanced VA. Just remember that the point here about the minister specifying the method to get relief, just know that he has already done that. And he did that by way of a 2016 legislative instrument, LI2243. The next point here is that where a relief provided is by refund, a claim for refund shall be made in the form and the manner the minister prescribed, like I already said. We are saying that for the purpose of point one above, which is um, minister granting relief, this does not apply to raw materials, parts and services that are or may become components of goods in respect of which a relief is granted, right? I'll explain this when we get to the list of relief supplies. Just take away from here that Key takeaway point or key thing to note is that this does not apply in the case of a relief granted under item 7, which is for VAT registered manufacturers who import raw materials under some conditions. So remember, the whole idea, remember that relief supplies or persons who are relieved from VAT, the mechanism is that all things being equal, they shouldn't be paying VAT. Think about it this way. When it comes to relief supplies, we are trying to relieve them from the VAT. So it's not, they are not exempt. They are subject to VAT, but we are trying to relieve some persons from paying the VAT. And there's something called a VRPO or a VAT relief purchase order or a VAT relief purchase order. It's a document, it's a sheet of paper, it's like a receipt booklet or an invoice booklet. What a VRPO typically does or when we used to issue VRPOs commonly. What happened was where someone charges you VAT and you are a relief person, you pay the person the transaction amount, you don't pay them the VAT, then you issue them a VRPO. So let's say 
I issue an invoice to you. That invoice is 100,000 CDs. Out of that 100,000 CDs, 70,000 CDs is um, my transaction value. Then the extra 30,000, let's say, is VAT for convenience purposes. If I'm a relief person, I'll only pay you 70,000. Then I'll issue you with the VRPO, the VAT or VAT relief purchase order to the tune of 30,000 CDs. So I'll give you 70,000 cash plus a sheet of paper with 30,000 written on it. That VRPO is from me, the relief person, to you to tell you that I am relieved, I'm not giving you cash. But you can use this as good as cash to the GRE and tell them that I supplied to a relief person and he gave me the VRPO as proof of um, being relieved. But I'm saying that this has changed. So only a few people have VRPOs and typically these are persons in the upstream oil and gas sector and the mining sector of Ghana who had stability agreements in their contract with the government. I know this is, this is detailed, but for now, remember that some persons still use VRPO, but they have special concessions by reason of the agreements they have with the government of Ghana. But know that for now, the practical way to get a relief is not through a VRPO, but if you are relieved, make payment for the VAT and later apply for a refund with the GRA. So which persons are listed on the third schedule as being relieved? Number one is the president of Ghana. The same person who is exempt from income tax under section 7 of Act 896. If you missed our video on income tax basic principles, take a look at that and you get to know who is exempt from income tax. But once again, the president of Ghana is listed here as being relieved from VAT. The next is um, a supply for the use of any commonwealth or foreign embassy mission or consulate. They are also um, relieved from VAT. But uh, you, are, you can see I'm saying subject to bullet four below, so I'll, we'll get there very soon. So just know that if you supply any good, any service for use to any commonwealth or foreign embassy mission or consulate in Ghana, they are relieved from VAT, but there is a condition. We'll look at the condition very soon. The next one is also that supply for the use of a permanent member of the diplomatic service of any commonwealth or foreign country that is exempted by parliament from the payment of customs duties. Any supply you need to these persons to will be relieved from VAT but subject to a certain condition I'll talk about very soon. The condition is that this applies only if a similar privilege is accorded by that country to the Ghana representative in that country. What do I mean by this? Let's say we are dealing with um, Germany right if germany also accords the ghanaian rep over there or the ghanaian uh, uh, foreign diplomatic person there accords them this same or similar privilege where they are also relieved from certain domestic sales taxes or vat then it will apply we are trying to be fair we are trying to um, ensure equivalence so if i'm giving you a relief here your country should also try to as far as possible as or as fast can also provide as a relief treatment. So just note that the supplies to the Commonwealth, foreign embassy missions or consulate and the members of diplomatic service has a condition. There must be a similar privilege. They didn't say it must be the same, it must be similar. You should also do something in your strength to relieve our rep in your country from taxes or from um, taxes on consumption of domestic um, VAT. The next is any supply for the use of an international agency or technical assistance scheme where the terms of agreement made with the government and approved by parliament include exemption from domestic indirect taxes so any supply you make for any international agency so this is typically be your your un's your africa unions your ECOWASs, any of those um, international bodies but it must be in the condition that the terms of the agreement made with the government of Ghana and approved by parliament should include some exemption from domestic indirect taxes in which uh, category VAT will fall. So remember, all of these persons so far, VAT applies to them, but they are relieved. So it's either when they have the VRP or when they have the VAT relief purchase order provided by the GRI to them, they can issue this to you in place of paying you cash. If they don't have the VRPO booklets to issue to you, then they'll have to pay you cash and then they can conveniently apply to the GRA for their money back. That's what it means to be relieved in practice. 
Another person, another category which is relief from VAT is emergency relief items approved by parliament. So when the parliament of Ghana approves um, any emergency item, or any emergency relief item, then it's also qualified for the treatment of relief. Let me give you a very recent practical example. So when it comes to COVID-19, um, sometime around March 2020, the Minister of Finance um, went to Parliament, gave a presentation, made, made a speech and said, um, one of the things he said was, he proposed that any donations you made towards the COVID-19 pandemic or the fight towards the COVID-19 pandemic should be treated as um, a waived item or VAT will be waived on that. Then in the month of April, the Minister presented the memo to Parliament and in that memo, he requested that Parliament gave him the authority or Parliament approved his uh, proposal that any donations made should be conveniently placed under this, um, this provision such that they will be deemed to be emergency relief items. Parliament approved good news. So as it stands now, as I speak today, whichever day you are watching this, any donation you make towards the COVID-19 pandemic will be treated as a relief supply for VAT as a relief supply for VAT. What happened after this was the GRA came out in a notice in the dailies and gave further guidance as to how taxpayers or as to how persons in Ghana could enjoy this relief treatment. If you are interested in what the GRA said and in where to get that document, you can leave a comment in the comments box below and I will share this document with you. So apart from the re emergency relief items that are clearly now um, items that we relieve from VAT, the next is for VAT registered manufacturers with respect to their raw materials at importation subject to some conditions. So if you are a VAT registered manufacturer and you import raw materials, obviously for manufacturing activities in Ghana and you meet certain conditions, then you'll be relieved of or relieved from VAT. What are the conditions? The first is that a manufacturer must be a member in good standing of the Association of Ghana Industries, AGI. Very important. You need to prove that you're a member in good standing. You pay your dues, you attend all meetings you're supposed to attend. You fulfill your duties to the maximum or to the letter when it comes to being a member of AGI. The next is the manufacturer should have submitted all previous tax returns and paid all previous taxes they are supposed to pay. Any penalties in any interest they are supposed to pay with respect to a tax period, they have fulfilled all their tax obligations. We want to ensure that persons who enjoy this relief are fully compliant tax payers. The next is the Commissioner General should be satisfied that the manufacturer has met the conditions above, as I just mentioned, member in good standing of AGI, submitted all previous tax returns and paid all taxes and other compliance requirements of the VAT Act. And then the Commissioner General will go ahead and list this manufacturer in a register, which he publishes annually. So he brings a list out almost every year in practice. This is what happens. So he renews this effective first January every year. He brings out a list of manufacturers he deems as persons who have met the qualifying criteria to be relieved from VAT. So once he thinks you are, he puts you on this list. He publishes it and we know who you are. So when it comes to importing your goods at the port, there's no argument about it. You, you are clearly documented, you are clearly identified and so on. Then the next one is the imported raw materials. This is the final condition you need to fulfill. Will be applied solely and exclusively for the manufacturing operations of the relief beneficiary. So if you're importing raw materials into Ghana, and you want to enjoy this relief treatment. In addition to being a member in good standing of AGI, in addition to submitting all previous returns, making all tax payments, being 100% compliant, in addition to the Commissioner General publishing your name in this annual list of manufacturers who qualify for this treatment, you should be able to prove or confirm that the imported raw materials will be used exclusively on manufacturing activities in Ghana. You're not going to import and then sell to someone else or you not import on behalf of someone else for their use, but it will be for your sole use in your manufacturing activities. So this, let's, let's pause here really. 
And as a quick recap, we have looked at in this particular session, we've looked at zero rated supplies really, we've looked at what the law deems to be zero rated. Then we said zero rated supplies can be found on the second schedule to the VAT Act. Then we came to relief supplies. Zero relief supplies can be found on the third schedule of the VAT Act. We have looked at examples of relief supply. In our next video, we look at the rules concerning time of supply and place of supply. Very important um, rules to know in order to establish when VAT is liable and where if applicable. Thank you.